Hey traders, welcome to Charts and Coffee. Great to see everyone. Happy, happy Friday. Uh, we continue to see a lot of turmoil in the markets. Uh, we just seem to see a kind of cascade, a domino effect of regional bank collapses, whether that be SVB signature, then migrate over the pond to Credit Suisse. And then now this morning we have, you know, it's kind of the roulette wheel of banks. Who's up next? We have Deutsche Bank. And what's really interesting, I was I was watching, and I don't know how many of you, uh, and again, this is just something that's an interesting layover of 08. You know, most of us, including myself, really never heard of a credit a CDS, right? Credit default swap before all of that. Something I never thought to look at. And then whenever we have a crisis, it's really interesting to take a look at those CDSs and just see what, so what, all that is is, how many dollars or how many euro, it depends on what the debt's denominated in, how many dollars or how many euros do you need to ensure default of a certain sum of money? And, and th these are fixed amounts. And, and when you see these things increase, for example, and one of the things that I mentioned in uh, the newsletter that you all will be seeing today in my mastery and those of you that are current this week in the market uh, subscribers, I talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the credit default swaps and and why those are at this point they're almost threefold what they were beginning in March uh, in in Europe and a lot of that has to do with obviously Credit Suisse and now Deutsche Bank so we're still seeing a lot of the remnants of that volatility which is going to put pressure on the Dow it's going to put pressure on the S and P because of the weighting of XLF. Everything that I look at is really based on this idea that now more than ever, we are dealing in high concentration weighted markets. You know, gone to the days where things sort of move on their own unless they're not in any way factored into major ETFs or the, or the indices. So ultimately what we have are all these stocks that are connected to one another because of their inclusion in an index or in an ETF. And, and, it's really interesting because another thing that I did was I was just crunching the numbers on on the on Apple and Microsoft. And you start looking at just two stocks that have such disproportionate weighting, especially now with that with the Nasdaq, with tech, SMH, XLK, XLY, XLC, these important sectors uh, really are able to move in a way that's not so affected by this thing on the screen here by XLF or KRE because whether that be XLK, which is Apple and Microsoft, whether that be the NASDAQ, QQQ, there's really less than 1% weighting in financials in those corners of the market. If you're looking for a place to trade, I don't even call it defensive. I won't even call it anything like that. Just what doesn't care about financials unless it's widespread risk aversion, aka panic? Yeah, keep an eye on tech. All right, so that's where we are this morning. As always, good morning to my folks in the trading room and also on our Simpler Trading YouTube channel, as well as my YouTube channel. Great to see everyone. If you have any questions, type them on in. You know, let me know what time frame you're looking at. Obviously, let me know what symbol you're looking at. Maybe you have a position in it or you want a position in it. Um, so let me know what you what you got in your mind and we'll, uh, we'll move forward. All right. First up, first up, uh, Jet Jockey. How are you? All right. So Jet Jockey asks, uh, the strategy of scaling in and out combined with stop loss orders supported by the DPMR has greatly improved my trading account. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Your approach has truly has been truly transformative. I'm deeply grateful. I'm deeply grateful to members who put in the work, right? Whether that be with my indicators or my strategies or any of us here at Simpler, I respect how much time and dedication you all have and commitment you all have made to become better traders. You're my kind of people. I appreciate that, Jet Jockey. All right, so moving on to our question, which is I'm looking at XLE, XOM, XLK, one hour this morning. Okay, let's start with XLE. Uh, it's interesting. When we have an overall risk-averse environment, regardless of the reason, banks, of course, a crude is going to suffer. Crude is going to suffer. So you'll notice... Uh, a, a dimmer economic outlook is oftentimes going to be quite uh, bearish to things like crude and even copper. Uh, another topic I tackle in 
uh, in this week's newsletter. So if we want to keep it a little bit more nimble, I love that you're thinking about exhaustion, my friend. So here's the thing. If we're looking at exhaustion in the XLE on the one hour, it's going to be a short, right? If we're looking at XLE to the short side, I've got to look at Exxon now to the short side. You know, we had a quick trade and, and this is where I really should, should have just uh, given my tools, my very own tools, uh, the benefit of doubt because I had, uh, and really I could have been more conservative. Uh, we had a target of 107 and right in here, my Exxon trade just went right into the DPMR and then you can see what's happened since. Now, once we start moving through support levels, once we start moving down into a red trend, really important, start moving into a red trend, which is what we have, we focus on the yellow zones because these are resistance. So uh, X, XLE, Exxon, same conversation. Exxon is the number one weighted stock in the XLE. All right, that moves us on to XLK. Here, if we're looking for bullishness, uh, we can look at the DPMR. Uh, there's no trend. We're trying to see, isn't that interesting? With as much struggle as we've seen in the broader averages, this is a really good sign when people say, oh my gosh, the markets are circling the drain or the markets are going to crash, right? That that kind of very generic general description. I try to take that verbiage out of my vocabulary. In other words, if we're really seeing overall panic, everything suffers. Utilities will suffer, suffer. Staples will suffer. Tech will suffer, not just the corners of the market that are financial, which is going to include the Dow and the S&P. Uh, the fact that XLK is managing to possibly move into an uptrend as we wind down the week is a very interesting thing. Now, if you're managing a lot of money, whether it's your own, whether you're a money manager, you're managing portfolios, what have you, and you're looking for a place that, to put money to work, you know, what is it going to be, right? What is it that you're going to start thinking about? Is the stock market crashing? No, corners of it are weak. And I think, remember, gang, when you start hearing words like crash and tank, keep in mind hyperbole. That's not going to give us the kind of trades we need. Let's look at things sector by sector, which is something that I do when I'm setting up trades in the sector secrets mastery. It's something that I do. You know, and you're going to see my work, my homework, my research on that in uh, in the newsletter. So really looking forward to what we'll see going into next week, which of course is end of quarter. XLK, Jet Jockey, let's look to the long side. All right, jumping on over to our training room. And let's see, um, Ed Ask, S-O-X-L. So if we're going to look at any kind of 3X, right, Ed? Then I'm going to ask myself, what's the root of something like an S-O-X-L, right? What's, what is it that I'm, that I'm looking at if I'm looking at that kind of symbol? And I think what's interesting is we do have so many different ways to take advantage of certain, um, now we have 3X and inverse and yeah, of course, but I want, always want to know what's at the root of, of that. So we might ask ourselves, okay, for those of you that may not know, this is what, this is a really important process. Uh, let me show you right now. I'm going to jump on over to uh, ETFDB. Let's pull up SOXL. And you can see what it is. It's the direction semiconductor. All right. Well, if I wasn't familiar with semiconductors, if I wasn't familiar with SOXL, first thing I want to know is some of these are 3X, 2X, inverse. But what are the holdings? This is somewhat helpful, right? But what's a really good way to understand what's going on in semiconductors? The touchstone. So I'm going to take that whole conversation back to, all right, what would I want to do in SOXL? Well, the question is, what would I want to do in SMH? All right. And then even further, kind of digging in a little deeper, the next question is, well, what are the stocks within the SMH? And collectively, what are high concentration weighted stocks doing? Right. So if I want to get in uh, SOXL, Right. Take a look here. Beaut Again, tech. If there's any way we're going to see strength, NVIDIA, AMD, AVGO, those are your relative outperformers there. 
So the question is, can we get, can you get in an S at 17? Again, I would look long. I would look long. And, and now it is where could the trigger be? You know, I like, I like where you're at that. Look at the 17 handle. I don't have a problem with that. You know, I personally, I would probably look at one of the relative outperformers or, or SMH. But yeah, I, I would not have a problem with a long uh, position as far as 17. What I would then do, okay, let's do this because it is a stock or an ETF under 20 bucks, right? So my my thing is if, I, if I've got something inexpensive like that, heck, even if it's not under $20, it's worth doing this. Let's go to the daily time frame, pull up SOXL. Let's look at the volume ledges. Let's look at our volume uh, profile, our price-based volume look. Interestingly enough, if I look back on the month and the year, your point of control is down at 1482, my friend. A little bit of a volume ledger on 16 and a half. That might be a slight tweak to that 17. If we pull in a whole year, let's go back to March of last year. Once again, looking at price based volume. And yeah, not a lot from a volume perspective at 17. It's interesting that we have the 200 in that area. So we are crossing over into the bullish hemisphere. The 200 is an excellent equator. But that 16 and a half might be a slight tweak, right? Let's take a look. We can add some volume to the conversation. All right. Uh, next up is uh, latest on NVIDIA. Hey there, Cot. All right, let's go take a look at NVDA. And we'll focus on the daily structure first. And then the hourly. The daily is in a beautiful uptrend, as we would expect. Uh, so many of these names have been relative outperformers, this being one of the best. And now we ask ourselves, all right, what do we want to do? What we want to do is one of two things. I can look at this from the perspective of my touchstone, which is the wave, the grab, Darvis. My mean reversion is at about 235, 234.80, Cot. Next thing we want to do Next thing we want to do is, okay, if that's going to be a little bit too much, that will be a bridge too far. What's another level I can look at? I could take a look at the DPMRs, which kick in at 264 and a half to 260 and three quarters. I would keep an eye on that. Yeah. All right. So that's, so long-term hold would then, for me, that word long-term then translates over cut to weekly. And if I'm going to have a longer term setup in NVIDIA, I don't mind that it's not in a trend. I just don't have a weekly setup. We do have a daily setup. So I would say, let the daily be the guide for now. And then we can revisit this if we get a sell off. Because at that point, I could look at weekly time frames for, as you mentioned, that longer term hold. All right. Next up, gang, is let's see here. Uh, we have. Uh, CAG for a bearish swing. All right, let's take a look. CAG, what is the structure, first of all, on CAG? If we're going to be looking at a bearish setup the, on the daily, right? Um, can't do it on, by the way, uh, can't do a short on the one hour. Beautiful. Beautiful support of the wave. Not beautiful. Good. Really good. Uh, but overall uptrend. The daily, however, it's coming up to the high of our slow stow. This is overbought. This is resistance. And why does that matter? If you're using an oscillator, gang, look at the structure of the market. And when the structure is neutral, like it is right now, when it's yellow, when it's neutral, what we have is an expectation of resistance. So if we're going to have that, let's get closer to 37, Cot. Or sorry, um, let's get closer to 37, Topspin, um, who's looking at Cog, uh, CAG. Yeah, 37, overbought stochastic up near that high. You just won't find a better oscillator than a classic slow stochastic. Slow it way down. That's the secret sauce. And then keep an eye on the low at 20, the mid at 50, the high at 80, classic slow stochastic analysis. 
It just works. All right. I appreciate that top spin. Thank you so much. All right. Next up is, so I like for, for, and when we talk about swing, it doesn't have to be a trend follow. It could simply be a trade where I have anywhere from on the short end, say a one to three day time horizon to maybe one to 10 day, two to 10 day, right? So short term swing. All right, Avi, you seem bullish on the market, but it looks like bears are in control. A lot of strong bounces getting sold, uh, making higher, uh, making lower highs, market neutral. Isn't it better to be short? Avi, it depends on what we're looking at, right? So remember, gang, the markets. Let's I, I try I struggle with that too because it's just such it's such common jargon, right? That's just the nomenclature of the market. The markets, right? The markets. Um, which market, right? Which market? That's always going to be part of watch list building. And you bring up a great point, which is, gang, 80% of what we do as traders is the research that we put into what we're going to trade, not how we're going to trade it. Most traders focus on the how. If I'm looking at XLF, completely agree. If I'm looking at SMH, that's in an uptrend, right? So if we're looking at financials, and those sectors and those indices affected by financials. If we're looking at financial stocks like JP Morgan, absolutely. If you want to get short, there are plenty of opportunities to do so at resistance levels and follow the overall trend. Sure. KRE would be another one. I'm going to have to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Woo. All right. So uh, KRE would be another one. However, if I take a look at something like XLK, I, I don't want to be short XLK, right? I don't want to be short tech, which goes back to that, that kind of conversation we kicked this uh, show off with, which is let's make sure that we're when we're building a watch list, we have bearish names we love, we have bullish names we love. Let's not build one watch list of the market. Let's build a watch list for XLK. Let's build a watch list for XLF. Let's build a watch list for the S&P. Let's build a watch list for the NASDAQ. And then within that, let's make sure we're separating what's bullish and bearish. Plenty to buy here. Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, ABGO. Uh, if I'm bearish, I'm going to go find those names that are already weak and we'll, and we'll short the rip there while I can still buy the dip here. So is it, isn't it better to be short? Depends on which market, right? Isn't it better to be long? Again, depends on which market. So thank you for the question. All right, next up. Uh, hey there, Stephen. I thought KRE uh, long puts in the daily and hourly. Oh, KRE. I know we don't have that for the daily, right? That's just not going to happen for the daily. Um, it's a downtrend. So I cannot, my my process, let's talk, go back to where can we be short? This is this is no buys allowed on either one of those for me. Um and, and it's just the simple reason is, take a look. Got to let it bounce. And when it bounces, as long as that's a red structure, puts, right? Same thing here. If it's a red structure in this zone, it's a reversion to the mean. That's a short the rip, right? Puts. And, and by the way, we are adding KRE. The bot is going to be running KRE for our hourly price movement ranges and our daily price movement ranges. So we have those great volatility zones on these charts as well, especially with the symbol in, in play the way that it is. Uh, it will be good to see where the volatility is, you know, not even if not, if not even for possible setups, what kind of volatility are we seeing? Because if the volatility simmers down and starts moving within those uh, more normal uh, volatility ranges, that might be the that might precede a little bit of that leveling out to possibly a recovery. We'll see what happens. And in the meanwhile, if we don't get that, we'll just look for short the rips, right? We'll absolutely just look for short the rips. All right. Um, next up is Natty. All right. Next symbol up is Natty going up in April. I have no idea. No, March isn't even over. Um, however, however, if we're looking for bullish opportunities on Natty. And to your point, that seasonal has not yet in any way kicked in. We really should have seen late February kick off that seasonal rally into June. We're not putting in lower lows. 
It's disappointing that the surge in late February just kind of collapsed here throughout March. But will we go up in April? I have no idea, my friend. What could we do to confirm that? The first thing I need is I need the daily to stop moving lower in this red structure, right? We had a brief period of time where, and this is where we did build a long position, right? And I still have that long position because we built it at a really good time. Uh, but if we were looking at a confirmation, actually, we built it before that, built it in here, um, in that area, right in here. Uh, if we're looking at a confirmation of potential neutral that precedes possibly moving higher, to your point, you know, each step, uh, the downtrend's got to be broken, then go into neutral. Neutral can give us opportunities to the long side, but it can also be a continuation, which is exactly what happened. So if we want to wait for better confirmation, we go from red trend on the multi-trend to neutral to green. I don't know, my friend. It's it's really not in sync with the seasonal uh, as far as what's happening uh, next. All right. Uh, iPod Touch says, yes, let's please take crash and end of the world out of all trading language. Some folks love it. Some folks love it. Um, I won't because, you know, look, if I tell you the markets are going to crash, what does that mean? We short now? Where's the stop? What's the target? What's the risk? How do we scale in? Um, which asset classes? Which sectors, right? So I agree with you, my friend. I agree. Let's just keep in mind where the more troublesome corners of the market are. Look at the stocks, look at the sectors, and then find out where those stocks and sectors could cause the most damage, if you will. And then the easiest thing is just avoid them. Just avoid them. So that is it. All right, gang, as always, thank you so much for joining me for Charts and Coffee. I will see you all on Sunday, 6 p.m. for the Rogi Report. By the way, by that time, uh, those of you that are subscribers to This Week in the Market, as well as my Sector Secrets Mastery folks, who that is included in your subscription, you will have some time to have read through that. The idea is to have a newsletter that's simpler, right? What's going on and why does it matter to me, right? How do we how do we point ourselves in the direction of where the opportunity may be? So that is what we'll continue to do with that newsletter. Uh, if you have any questions after reviewing it uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday evening, 6 p.m., great time to touch base for the Ragi Report. Be good to each other, gang. I will talk with you soon.